The putting of the edges, there's a variety of ways that, that that can be done. There's a way that I've been showing, the way that I've been doing it. There's uh, there's other ways that can do it a lot faster, which you might even be able to apply to this. It might take a little bit of skewing of the perspective with this, so I'm, I'm actually not going to do it by by that way, but um, we'll just kind of put it in the way that I the way that I used to. So find the other green. Okay, it's, it's going to be this one here, so I'm not really worried about how things are moving. I know that there's no parity. I know that the internal structure now is fine, and I shouldn't get any problems. So turn, 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 turn. Any question with what I'm doing, ask, but I think you all have it figured out. So that's, that's in there. Uh, what I like to do is try to pair them as much as possible. So... We'll pair this guy here. Now understand as I'm doing this, I could be setting up a parity. I don't have something inside here to guide me as to the proper orientation, but that's okay. That's a parity we know how to deal with. Turn, turn, turn. And believe it or not, this does tend to go a little faster than you might think. I generally like to focus on, on one side as I'm doing it. Move this here. Move this here. And same thing. Turn. Boom. 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 And up. Picking it up where we left off here. This is going to come in. Down. Turn. And again, there's multiple. Battery went on on me a little bit. I'm not sure what got lost, but the uh, reason why this tends to go a little bit faster for me is the fact that I've got multiple areas that I can put in. It's not just one that I'm hunting for. At any given moment, I can probably find what I, what I need, like over here. This can come here, this can come here, and we'll make short work of this. Turn. So, most other puzzles are just one side, one of those components that I can put in here. I got, I had a couple of greens that I can use. This can come in here, in which case I'm going to be exchanging it with this. So this is a middle exchange, one of the middle exchanges. Make sure it clicks. That's the only thing to be aware of with this is, is the clicky mechanism, but really not a big problem for me. All right, so that's okay. I guess we're down to the last two. Okay, so the algorithms are the same. Remember, this this isn't really the, the big issue here. I like this challenge here. So how are we going to do that? Well, I guess what I'd like to do is I'd like to take these two and move it here, and these two and move it down here. Because if I do that, this should be in line with this, and then these two should be up here, just leaving this one to go. So to make that exchange, I'm going to take this and move these two like so. And then that algorithm is going to be R F I U R I F and slice it back. Now understand, this is not new. Anything that it is not new, but it did have the effect that I wanted. These are in. These are in. Granted, they're parodied, uh, but that's okay. We can deal with that. We're not scared. A little old parody. It kind of makes these puzzles fun. You don't just want an extension of a 3x3 three three now, do you? So this will come down here, this will come up here, which means we're going to move it from here. Anytime you do the slice, that's what's going to be doing the exchanging. So this will come here. Now let me consider something here carefully before I do that. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, I, was, yeah, I just had a thought there. So anyway, this will turn over here, then R, F I U R I F and slice it back and lo and behold it's in and no parodies. Now if we did have a parody we could do that Red Bull algorithm but we didn't have a need to do that. But what we have now done and you can see how nice and symmetric this is we are taming the hexaphobic just in time for Halloween. But you can see that we have 
uh, reduced it to something very familiar to us, which is pretty much um, a morphing, a master morphing. But it isn't even layered, so we could get parity. So let's kind of go through the master morphings version of the solve because that never grows old. Anyway, we'll start off with this side here as this is already in. So let's find a green. Um, and here's a green here. Now what I'm going to want to do is I, I want to correlate it with the centers that are here. So we should have probably got our centers back before I did that. And actually, let's go ahead and do that. That's good. That's good. Okay. So I just have to correlate these with this center over here. So let's move this down. Again, there's nothing new about what I'm doing. This is all um, master power morphings solve strategies. Just in a monstrous form here. This will come here, this will come here, this will come here. You can see how good this movement is. It's really just a pleasure to, to use. Now I need a red one. I need a red one that'll fit better. Okay. Do some turning here. This is just like three by three turning. All right, see what we got here. Wonderful. Okay, so we have to correlate it with this side here, though. This is the fun part, especially because it moves so darn well. Okay, so we've got our center here. Now we're just going to get our edges. Even as tiny as this is, it is equal in the eyes of the solver, no matter how small. Okay, turn, turn, turn. We can put the green one in right down here. Turn, turn, turn. Any questions on this? See the Master Morphing's Solve tutorials. Anyway, green, red, and yellow. Green, red, and yellow. So we're just going to roll this puppy in. Okay, so this is correct. White, red, and green. It's this one, but it's not rolled in correctly. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn. Turn, turn, and turn. Okay, so we got it. We've got our turtle shell, our first layer here. Move it up here, put in our second layer. We have to find a green one, not in there. How about a yellow one? This one, and it's got to be facing with a wider part down. Turn, 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 turn. Now, I'm rushing through this because we've seen this, and I've, I've done some of the other super giants before, but I just have to keep my perspective. This is the down area, so one that is facing in front of me has to be the front area, and this is the top, obviously. Okay, I didn't bat my green one out yet, so I can't get to that. But this red one will, and it's got to come over to here to join it with this center, uh, this edge, this corner, rather. Turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. Strict Rubik's Cube strategy here. Nothing new under the sun. And turn. Okay, great fun. Now the green one should have been batted out, which it was. Turn, 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 and turn. Okay. That just leaves our last layer. Now let's go through that. This is the one that's the most challenging in the Mega Mink Solve. We're, go we're going to be using some deductive reasoning to see exactly what we have. What's in and what's out? Well, the first thing to look at is the association of these guys with each other and the possibility of parity. As you can see, this is facing one way. This is facing the same way. They're not facing each other. So we know that one of them is in, one of them is out. They're not both in and they're not both out. Taking a look at these, they are facing opposite ways, which means that either both are in or both are out. Now, I'll tell you that this means we have parity. And the reason for that is, um, well, let's, let's uh, kind of think of it deductively. You're going to have a few, uh, two situations on an even-numbered one. They're both going to be facing each other, or none of them are going to be facing each other. That's all that you can have. When you have two facing, uh, one set facing each other and one set not, that's got to be parity. So let's reason through that as to why that is. Let's say this one is, is correct. If this one is correct, this one must be wrong. 
right? What about these two? Well, either they're both correct or they're both wrong, which means this is right and everything is wrong. Um, or alternatively, this is correct and, well, if this is correct, then this is wrong and these both are correct, which means you've got three that are correct and one that's wrong, right? So that's, that's not kosher. That's not, that's not going to make any sense. To best demonstrate it, let's pretend like, say, this one is right. If this one is right and these are, say, all wrong, let's go ahead and flip these over and see what happens. So these are going to flip and these are going to flip and let's just see what happens. And that algorithm is, uh, is going to be the the F R U R I U I F I. So we'll do it from this perspective. F. Well, actually, we could do that, but let's let's rotate it around and see what happens. So if this is right, let's rotate this around until this comes across one of these guys here. So forward, forward, boom, boom, boom one two, and down. Uh, okay, so this is flush, this is flush. So this is, let's say this is correct, which means this must be wrong. Which means this can't be correct if this is correct. So therefore these both must be wrong. So um, let's just say that uh, this is right. Even if we were to say that this is right and maybe this is right, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do our F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. So, so how are we doing? These are facing opposite now, and these are facing the same. So this is kind of like our, we can say that, okay, these two are right now, and um, maybe these two are wrong. So let's do it again. This is like our line, so to speak. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. Okay, so this brings out the parity. Right, 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 and wrong. All right, so we were correct in what our assumptions were. We assumed that this was right, and initially this was flipped wrong, and then we assumed that both of these were flipped wrong, but in reality, these are right, this is right, this should be right too, but it's flipped, it's parity. So the way that we're gonna deal with this is we're going to deal with using the Red Bull um, algorithm. With this being the R and this being the L, we just have to maintain our perspective. This is F, this is B over here, this is U over here. So let's see what happens because we're going to flip it from here. So that's going to be 2R, 2B, 2U, and L. 2 up, Ri, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2 F, R, 2 F, then Li, 2 B, and 2 R. Okay, and that, that should have worked. But we know that when we did that, we rotated this. But that's okay. Because what we did is we went right into the mechanics of this edge, and we flipped it around. So this now should be in a configuration without any actual parity. So what I'm going to do is kind of a partial re-scramble to put this right, to set this right. Bearing in mind that this is my... This is my, my up now. I mean, this this was my original side. So let's go ahead and just put these centers in where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to turn this down here, turn this here, maybe go like this, try to minimize as much issues as possible, put this in like so. And now that I've done that, now that I've put the middle in, we're going to start get, getting these guys back in. So now let's reason this out yet again. Let's put our centers back here. And um, just of note, we see that this one edge is in and these ones are not. Um, so let's reason this out again. These are facing opposite each other, which means if this is in, this is also in. 
These are also facing opposite each other, so we have taken the parity out. Good job, strong work. Um, but we don't know, maybe these two are out or these two are in. But it doesn't really matter at this point because it's perfectly kosher, perfectly fine to have two out and two in because this could be our L formation. But let's rotate this around and see, and, and see what happens with that. Okay, so we'll do our algorithm that keeps this here and that rotates this around. So assuming again, this is our F move and this is our R move. R, U, R, I, U, R, two U, all right, and you did it, you've done it. Now have we truly, truly kept these in proper configuration? Well, this is correct and these aren't, which is exactly what we want. So, um, once again, let's, let's be careful with this. This is gonna be our F move, because it's one that moves this edge, this corner. This is our R move, because that also moves that corner. So by definition, that's how we're gonna do that. So, forward. Back. This is our L move here. Back. Boom. Boom. Bang. Kerplop. And you gotta love it. This is right. This is right. These two are in the right place. They're just rotated wrong. Right? Right. So we're gonna go ahead and roll this in and hope that we don't have any of those false equivalencies. But hey, this is like a literally a parody souffle, this puzzle is. So turn, turn. Turn, turn. We're in the home stretch here. You've worked hard. You put in your lumps. Sweat, toil, and tears. Turn, turn. Now this may or may not take us to the end, but let's see. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn. Turn and turn and turn and you've done it. You have tamed the hexaphobic, a beast of a puzzle with parodies both unique and similar that require perspectives that uh, skew your brain and turn your cortex into knots. But with enough patience, you're able to do it. And if you can do this, you can probably do, probably do others. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks, Trafim, for such an entertaining puzzle. Keep up the good work. Uh, I will be following your work closely. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And happy Halloween to everyone. Enjoy, and uh, remember, it's a, probably a lot better and healthier to give candy than receive it.